Christina. Hi, Hi Amy. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm man. great. How are you doing today? I'm good. So I got to watch the first two episodes of Promised Land. And let me just say, there's so much drama. <laughs> Like, I was not expecting that many, like, plots to be revealed in, like, the first episode. Oh, my so, gosh. I know. Every pa- page turner when reading the script, that's for sure. I know. So, like, what's one of the uh, storylines you can't wait to play out for viewers to see? Um, I love uh, Augusto and Natalia, their dynamic. So, the Mateo-Daniela dynamic is one that I'm personally I have a soft spot for um but I I just love the idea of the patriarch and kind of how he has to then navigate you know this interplay and dynamic between the siblings because he has the bird's eye view but he's so enmeshed in all of them that I I love that storyline and speaking of the patriarch uh he has like a lot of like little dark secrets that like we can't wait to be revealed like his kids not knowing his true identity and uh not even his like ex-wife knowing his true identity and like how he got the land like what type of character would you describe the father as um well I think Joe for the most part is kind of the culmination and amalgamation of all of the other characters like we're all you know apple doesn't fall far from the tree so we are extensions and evolutions of one part of him at least that's how i see it every one of our characters is a bit of him and then expanded so he's kind of like the i mean you know you need his seal of approval i think that he as the patriarch has a lot of weight on his shoulders he has a lot of responsibilities and all the secrets are part of that sense of duty he has to his family, because this is family first. So mm-hmm. I think that, you know, he is the culmination of all of those put together, the good and the bad. And I know with your character, like, I like how they uh, did your characters uh, argue site because, like, your character is the oldest child. And, like, usually when you're the oldest like you're you're perfect you have to be perfect you have you do everything your parents say you're Mm -hmm. not as rebellious because like you're supposed to be that example Mm -hmm. uh what can we see play out with your character because like in the first scene like uh her whole world well the first episode her whole her whole world kind of collides within a split second and she does not know how to navigate it and I think, I mean, I relate to that as, as a woman, as, a, as somebody who is trying to do the work-life balance for someone who has a sense of duty to their family. And um, there's a lot of shoulds, right, that she has to somehow shake off. There's a lot of this is how it should be done. This is what I should be doing. And, you know, I think that she learns she doesn't really know what she wants. She doesn't really know who she is because she's never had to dissect that or explore it. And all of a sudden, you know, one of the beauties of what the writers have done is like from the get go, they say, okay, you think you have your bleep together. Now we're going to question all of it. And so I think that in this day and age, especially when all of us are um, exploring and expanding on our identities and our sense of self, and that feels very important to be aligned with our morals, I think that she's in that journey. I think that she wants to do things different to what probably she thinks she should, but she also doesn't know how. So she's going to find that out really quickly. (laughs) And, like, uh, one of the things I love is, like, um, when she questions, like, if she's a good person and, like, her sister has to reinforce into her, like, you made one simple mistake, but that doesn't take away from the fact that you're a good person. Like, talk about the importance, because we also see, like, two different sister dynamics. It's yours and Carmen's, and then it's Liddy and her sister Rosa. And, like, what is the comparisons and difference between those two sisters? So I think the sibling dynamic, especially between the women, which was so important to us to kind of like establish with all the subtleties and nuances that real sibling rivalries, right? My example is always like with my brother and sister, it's like, I would take a bullet for you, but if you touch my phone charger one more time, I will be the one to kill you. That's my example always. (laughs) And I think that that's so important because we're not seeing an archetype and a cliche dynamic where it's always the same. 
that mm -hmm. there are moments where Carmen feels maybe a little bit envious of some of the uh, responsibilities and, you know, kind of respect that Veronica has garnished. But at the same time, you know, she's the one who really has her senses about her when Veronica is lost, which I think is an opportunity for them to find a new dynamic together. So I loved, you know, those partnerships, uh, same thing with Le Leti and Rosa. I think that those relationships, which is a very different type of sibling dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. I think that showing that diversity of thought, of perspective, which I tend to say of like, there's not one type of archetype dynamic or of personality when it comes to, you know, a diverse cast. You can't just put us all in one kind of boat. I love that they're doing that on this show. And there's going to be so many more to explore. And I'm just really excited about that. And oh my goodness, this family's Full, full, full of secrets. <laughs> so, like, is your family um, not like that? You think? Do you guys not? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's so funny because, like, it, it's so funny. Like the the, the saying that goes is like more money, more problems. They're like outside mm -hmm. their family secrets. There's all these other outside problems that are coming in. So, like, just looking at the outside dynamic of how this family structured, mm -hmm. how do you think they're going to be able to take on these problems? You know, I love that they are now tackling issues and also combating them, whether it's professional and business-wise, whether it's political, whether it's social, you know, like they really are going to have to confront all of those. And they're just breaking stereotypes left and right. And I love that so much. They're not showing us a family that like, you know, our creator, Matt Lopez says, like, it's not a cartel. It's, it's successful. It's juicy. It's dramatic. There's, you know, all of those wonderful things that you want to watch in a show. And at the same time, it's grounded in things that are so personal and also universal. So hopefully people that are one of those types will relate, but also the ones that won't will find themselves in those common threads. So I, you know, the juicy, I, I just, I love that because there's nothing like a plot twist, nothing like a cliffhanger to me. It will get me hooked. And I, you know, the audiences enjoy half as much as I enjoy reading the scripts and making it, then hopefully, you know, they will resonate with it and want to keep watching because that's how I feel. And with the show, it's like uh, the family's business is a wine vineyard. So how much did you know about wine before and how much did you learn uh, getting ready for this role? <laughs> I knew nothing about wine. <laughs> it's like, I uh, don't drink. And so I was just completely clueless. And I was scared to tell our producers at first when I first booked the job, one of the first texts, which was a joke, but it was really funny. And it was like, wine on set, ha ha ha, you know, like very, and I was like, oh, should I not tell them that I've never had wine? <laughs> should I not say that? Um, I've learned so much, not just about wine itself, but about wine making. Um, I've tried a bunch of different types of wine. There was nothing, I had no reason not to drink. I just didn't. And now I've learned the type of kind of subtle, like the smells and everything that goes into wine making. But mm -hmm. especially for me, what was important was learning the business of winemaking, producing and selling. So that was, you know, my main focal point was there's so many, by the way, female run wineries, wine labels, distributors, bottlers. So that was really interesting to learn that this is not at all fictionalized and far-fetched, that there are a lot of not only Latin families, but also female run, like female CEOs of a lot of these places up here in Sonoma and Napa. Um, so outside of your, I want to know like what drew you to your character uh, when you first like read the script, like what about your character drew you to her and like what makes her different from other characters she's played in the past? Well, you know, obviously I can like tap into the fact that we don't see these characters very often, especially for, you know, Latina females that are business owners and also wives and, and members of their family and mothers. We don't see a lot of that on primetime and on television. But aside from that, what I liked is that she's finding ways to do it that differ from her father and differ from the men in her life. So she's not trying to be powerful and the CEO that her father would be in the same ways. She's trying to do it her way. And I think that showing that kind of feminine approach that is not in any way weakened or less than, I think that that is beautiful to show on TV because I, I think a lot of the time as an actor, we're, we're faced with breakdowns and characters that 
they've now made female um, and thank goodness because it's in the zeitgeist to kind of bring them to the forefront, but they're written like the male version. And Mm -hmm. so to me as an actor, like that's what really pulled me in is that Veronica wasn't trying to be one of the guys and, and battling these, you know, different dynamics. It's that she was doing it her way and finding her way. And the funny thing about Veronica is like, I don't know if she realizes it yet, but she's living out her mother's dream because her mother wanted to be the owner of the vineyard. Wait until you start, if, until you see some of the scenes between her mother and her, that that's going to be very enlightening. And yeah. working with Bellamy, I mean, come on, you know. <laughs> Cause it's, it's, it was so interesting because like we don't know it yet, but like just to see like how uh, the mother is estranged from all of her kids except for one and like mm-hmm. to like wonder like what happened for all her kids to side with Joe instead of her mm-hmm. and if she's really like that loving mother figure or if she just like it's very like revengeful and she's using her kids so like I feel like that's gonna be an interesting dynamic to see oh, it's it's always full and always juicy that's, well, that's as much as I can say <laughs> I'm driving <laughs> through the canyon unique I can't I can't hear you <laughs> Well, that's all the questions I have for today. So thank you so much for talking with me. Same. Thank you so much for taking the time. And I'm so happy that you like the show. I'm I'm excited for you keep watching. I love it. I can't wait to see how this all plays out. Because like the way episode two ended, I was like, oh my God. (laughs) Where is the buzz? Where is the buzz? You said my mind. Where is the buzz? (laughs)